So I did my presentation on lecture strategies. And how many of you know a professor who reads directly off their PowerPoint? Or, and you have no idea what you're actually supposed to write and understand what you just wrote or what you're supposed to know for the test. Yeah, a lot of us have that problem. So the problem today is that teachers don't specify what their students actually need to know in an organized fashion and they also aren't doing the best job of evalu evaluating their students' progress. So according to Thomas Angelo in his article on um, classroom assessment techniques, um, he says that it is important that we do assessments on our students in the classroom um, and to focus those assessments on the characteristics of um, learner-centered, um, teacher-directed, mutually beneficial, formative, um, content-specific, and ongoing. And um, he also su suggests that you should tell your students why you're asking or why you're telling them the information and why you're asking them in the assessment. Um, and teach them how to do the assessments before you actually give them to them, as well as um, why the information you're giving them is going to make a difference in the future. Um, and he says that teachers should give assessments before each unit, so whether it's an assessment on prior knowledge um, or an analysis of their critical thinking skills or an analysis of their skill in problem solving, or their self-awareness as, as learners, or the course-related learning and study skills and their strategies and behaviors. Um, according to David Longworth, he has a different, somewhat similar but different um, approach to what he thinks a good lecture strategy would be. And um, he thinks that the professor or teacher should show enthusiasm about their topic, what they're teaching, because if a teacher is not show that they have any interest, then the students aren't really going to enjoy or have any interest in what they're learning. Um, and he says that you should present the topic first and then have an outline of it and then followed by the main points and the supporting materials. And then at the end of his, your lecture, give a discussion about what was learned and a, a handout maybe of, what, of the broken down material that you just learned. And he says the most important is just to engage your students. And then Charles Bonwell from ericsdigest.com um, says that to make your lecture um, interactive, so he agrees with Longworth, um, by showing, like giving a dem demonstration in class um, or giving an ungraded writing as uh, assessment or exercise during your lecture, um, you give like a two minute mini lecture separated by group study session with a study guide, so breaking into groups and kind of discussing what you just um, learned in your first mini lecture and then start lecturing again and then break into groups for a second time and discuss what you just learned again. Or he recommends doing a 20 to 30 um, minute presentation and tell your students beforehand not to take any notes on what on the presentation or the video that you're watching or whatever your um, lecture is about. And then at the end of it, do a five minute writing um, writing activity and write down things that you just learned throughout those 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and Laurel and Gregoria and Carol Aulis um, also say they agree with all of them and they think that it's important to um, focus on metacognition which is three different strategies put together um, which is Connecting new information to prior knowledge, um, developing strategies for thinking and planning, monitoring and evaluation, evaluating how we think. Um, so looking at the big picture, basically as a teacher you should set goals and make them achievable um, as well as assess your students in the classroom so that you know how you're doing as a teacher and that will help you improve your lecturing techniques. That's all I got.